Well, hi everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the director's video message. You might remember the last time I spoke to you about the area of freedom uh, as Christians. And this time I want to speak to you about the area of your authority in Christ. Those two things are directly and intimately connected. Because if you lose your authority, you lose your freedom. And that's what happened with the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. They had the fullness of authority given to them by God. You remember that the scripture says in Genesis chapter 1 that God had given them dominion over the entire earth. That word includes and means authority. But you'll recall it what happened when they rebelled against God and disobeyed him, when they believed the lie of the enemy, that they lost their authority. And when they lost their authority, that was the ushering in the beginning of everything that we have known as stealing, killing, and destroying. That authority meant that all those things from the enemy were able to come in in the human race. So these two things of authority and freedom are connected. You lose your authority, you lose your freedom. And so Jesus came to restore and bring back that authority and that freedom. Listen to what he says in Matthew 18, verse 11. He says, the Son of Man came to save, other versions say restore, that which was lost. Notice that they use the word that, not those. Now those are included within the that. But the that is bigger than those. Some of the things that were lost were our authority and our freedom. And as a result, there was loss to the human race. Jesus came to restore that authority, to restore that power, and so to restore our freedom. When Jesus came, one of the first things that was recognized about him by people were his authority, or was his authority. Because they said when they listened to him that he spoke with authority and not like the scribes and the Pharisees. And then they noticed his authority in the area of power. And they said, what kind of a teaching is this? Because with authority, he commands the demons and they leave. They noticed his authority. And the centurion noticed his authority. Remember what he said? When Jesus said that he would come to the centurion's house to heal his servant, he said, no, no, I'm not worthy of you to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed because I too am a man under authority. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to this one, come, and he comes. The centurion recognized that Jesus had authority. And there was someone else who recognized that he has authority. And that was Satan. Remember when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness? Here's what he said to him. He took him up, remember, onto a high place, and he showed him all the kingdoms and all the areas of the world. And he said to them, he said to Jesus, These have all been delivered to me. I have been given authority over them. And I will give that authority to you if you will only worship me. Satan is a liar, but he made a correct statement there. Because we had, our first ancestors had handed authority over to Satan. And that's why Jesus called him the ruler of this world. And praise God for us, even though this was a real temptation. Because imagine this, Satan was trying to tempt him with an offer that would have enabled him to avoid the cross to get authority over all these kingdoms. But thank God he turned Satan down because that would have led to the ultimate enslavement of all of us had Jesus given in to that offer to worship him to get authority. So Jesus came to bring that authority and that freedom for us. And so listen to what the scripture says about this authority that he now brought not only for him to exercise, but to give to us. Let's look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 verses 1 to 2. And Jesus was talking to the 12 disciples. 
And it says, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Notice that one of the first things he did was to give them power and authority. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick, or to put it another way, to start to destroy the things that steal, kill, and destroy. And then let's look at Luke chapter 10, because now Jesus is sending out the 70. And listen to what is said in Luke 10 verses 17 to 19. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus restored power and authority to man. And the result of restoring that power and authority was that freedom, the enslavement by the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy was broken off of us. But then Jesus went further than that because he gave the authority not just to the 12, not just to the 70, but to everyone who believes. And so here's what Jesus says, very familiar scripture in Mark 16, verses 17 to 18. He said to the disciples, he who, is, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And here's then what he says. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Authority restored is freedom restored. And then Jesus goes even further with this in Mark eleven twenty two to 24. And he says, if you say to this mountain, if anyone says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea and will believe in his heart and not doubt, he will have whatever he says. Jesus came to restore our authority, to restore our power, and that meant restoring our freedom. How great was the scope of this authority that Jesus restored? Jesus said right at the end before he would be resurrected, raised up for the final time and leave earth, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. What's left out of all? Absolutely nothing. How far does that authority go? Just to heaven and earth. In other words, everywhere that exists. And that's the authority, brothers and sisters, that has been given to us, Jesus' authority. So how do we exercise this authority? It's been given to us. And yet oftentimes we see that Christians aren't exercising that authority that they've been given. How is it exercised? Authority is voice activated. Everything that God does as an act of authority is voice activated. He created a universe by voice activation. He spoke it into existence. And then once it was created, how does he maintain it? It says in the scripture that he upholds all things by the word of his power. And then everything that is done by Jesus when he comes on earth was voice activated. He healed the sick by speaking words. He cast out demons by speaking words. He raised the dead by speaking words. He controlled the forces of nature, harmful forces of nature, by speaking words. It was his authority, but it was voice activated. How do we activate our authority? It's when we use the name of Jesus, when we speak it. It's when we speak the Word of God, because the Word of God has in and of itself inherent power when we speak it. And it's through the reality of the Holy Spirit living within us. Think of that. The authority giver, the power giver, lives within you and me. 
You see, we have all the things that we need to exercise that authority. Let me give you an example in, in the life of myself and my wife, Sharon. In 2018, uh, Sharon and I were in North Carolina uh, when I was there on a conference. And we were driving from Raleigh, North Carolina to Charlotte. And shortly after we started, we got caught in the midst of a wild tropical storm on the highway. And there were very few people on the highway. And in fact, all the signs kept telling us, flashing signs telling us to, to get off the road. But there was something inside me that, that said, no, I, I had a sense, no, I wasn't to do that. And while we were driving in the midst of a torrential rain and wind, I spoke to that storm in the name of Jesus and with the word of God. And I demanded that storm to stop. And within not a lengthy period of time, but almost immediately that storm stopped as soon as I spoke. It went from a raging storm to stopping. You see, we have authority and power in the name of Jesus to use his word. And we need to be doing that. The only thing that stops us from doing that is our belief, is our confidence. Jesus said, these signs will accompany those who what? Those who believe. And so when we believe, we act. And you know what's interesting was there wasn't anything special that I felt or experienced when I spoke to that storm. There wasn't any special sense of power. There wasn't any neon sign from heaven. I was doing just what the word said to do just exactly what you can do. Use the name of Jesus. Use the word of God. Use the power of the Holy Spirit inside me to exercise my authority. We've been given authority and power, and that has restored our freedom by the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, especially in this time, where the enemy is trying to scare people out of their authority, who are believers. You have authority over COVID-19. You have authority over this environment we are in. If there is anything involving stealing, killing, and destroying, attempting to happen in your life or the lives of anybody else, those are things you have authority over because they're the authority Jesus gave you over the works of the enemy. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you, Walk in that authority, speak that authority, use that authority. You don't have one molecule less of authority than Sharon and I have. Praise God. This will take you over the hump in this time that we're in. Well, I want to give you um, some announcements, as we always do when we close. December 14th, we're going to be having live stream healing school. Because we are in a lockdown here in Toronto currently, we're not able to have our healing school open to, to everyone as we normally do. But that's not stopping us from doing healing school. So December the 14th at 7 p.m., um, I'll be speaking at healing school on the subject of God's healing power for us. And so I encourage you to tune in by live stream. You know, you don't have to be personally present at healing school in order to get healed. Scripture says God sent his word and healed them. And we're going to be sending the word out to you on December the 14th at seven o'clock. And then it's Christmas time coming and Andrew Womack's a generous guy and he's got some gifts for you. So right now Andrew is doing his teaching on financial stewardship and we have a, a special gift offer. And that is you can choose one of a book or a DVD or a CD album on the topic of financial stewardship by Andrew. And it's free. All you have to do is enter the promo code uh, that's on our website. So go to the website, use the promo code, make your order and choose one of those three things, a book, a DVD or a CD album on financial stewardship and we'll be happy to send it out to you. Well, until next time when we have our director's video message. God bless you. Stand firm, stand strong in the faith. Look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.